Hi guys and welcome to the latest EV review. Now what we have here today is something quite small but actually really feisty. And it's called Earman, actually the brand is Earman and it's called Sparrow. So I'll quickly show you the box. Um, this is it. And on the back here you can see everything it supports. It's a um, high resolution PCM, DXD, DSD, MQA, basically everything you could ever want. And inside the package there is like really short manual and two USB cables. The one for USB-C smartphones and the other one for traditional USB port. So this means you can connect it to either PC or any smartphone. And interesting thing is it's actually driverless. That means you don't need any drivers to use it. Uh, that also means that older operating systems are not supported. For example, Windows 7, 8, and even some really old Windows 10 builds, like from two years, um, three years ago. But if you have your Windows updated, it will work without you having to download any drivers. Also, I hooked it up to several smartphones and it just worked without any effort on my side. Now, regarding the build, as you can see, it's quite small and it's very compact. It feels nicely made. I kind of like it and it's quite slick looking in my opinion. Now there are no controls on it as you can see. There is USB input and there are two outputs. One is single ended 3.5 millimeters stereo jack and the other one is balanced output 2.5 millimeters. So I'll start with single ended output which is the one most commonly used nowadays still. Okay, so the sound that came through it is, how would I explain that? Quite full bodied and quite meaty sound. And I like that. It's also punchy. You know, it's not just something that is like meaty, but warm and lazy or anything like that. No, it's, it's full bodied, but punchy and it's quite detailed. It's, it's lively type of sound. Edges are nice and crisp. And in terms of balance, it's very neutral. You know, the, there is bass line. It's fairly deep. It has punch. It has heft. Mid range is really nice and clear. Everything there. I, I, I don't detect any emphasis on any region. Everything just sounds natural to me. And when it comes to the highest frequencies, they're again quite detailed, neutral sounding and, and just pleasant, but they could do with a little bit more of air. And that sort of air that you, that you hear in the recording comes from the really extreme highest frequencies. And um, I think that there's a little bit of laid back presentation in terms of high frequencies that makes for a quite musical, easygoing experience, but lacks a little bit of that final air and spaciousness provided by these. And as comparisons go, I had this Dragonfly Black, the cheapest one at hand, and Sparrow is simply um, more dynamic sounding, more lively, meatier in the mid-range, like cleaner and crisper edges. It's just better sounding overall. And um, I didn't have Dragonfly Red, which would be much more logical opponent to, to this Sparrow. But uh, I do remember hearing Red and Black side by side and going by that memory alone, by the difference I remember hearing between black and red, I'd say that I'm pretty sure Sparrow sounds better than red too. It's, it's a little bit meatier, a little bit more dynamic and just livelier sounding. Okay, but 
that's not all. The fun actually begins when you switch to balanced output. And I just used the same headphones, my hi fi mens. I just switched cable from single ended to balanced and started listening the same songs. And the first one was a very clean, uh, calm song with some guitar. And immediately I noticed more microdynamics, crisper transients, and, and just in that song, um, there is a space in recording, like, you know, sense of the space around the singer's voice, um, like studio or place where it was recorded, and going to balanced outputs just conveyed that so much better, you know, there was wider sound stage and better separation, edges cleaner, more energetic. And um, that air up top that I said is a little bit lacking uh, in the single-ended uh, connection just came alive. I, I could hear a lot more of space around the instrument, air, better separation. And bass region had firmer grip. And then I actually moved to some other tracks, something more bassy, something a little bit busier. And um, I realized that everything that actually sounded quite nice through single-ended now went uh, a notch or two even above that. Just more grip, more control, more organization in the music. And at one moment, I was listening this song from Muse, and I just, I was just surprised how this small thing, so unassuming, kept everything with firm grip, uh, layering, uh, everything was in its place, and the track didn't feel cluttered or losing control it, at any moment. This was driving my like big high fimans um, with great skill, really, you know, with great timing and precision and, and all of that. It's funny that I basically couldn't find uh, any fault with its sound quality. I was really impressed. Um, in balanced mode, it basically achieved and in some things, maybe even surpassed its big brother, Earman TR amp here. Um, it's single-ended only and it's, it's bigger, more powerful, so it's not really the same category, it's not a competition, but in some areas, like how clear, crisp and, and spacious and well-layered everything is, I think it even surpassed its older brother a little bit. And um, the only thing that, that I can tell you about its character, that it's definitely not a laid back, warm and fuzzy listen. If you want something to just, you know, relax, something that sounds very warm and fuzzy and mellow, this is not that kind of device. You know, this is not a, a, a big, slow, comfy cruiser. This is a nimble race car. It's speedy, it's fast, it's jumpy, and uh, it, it, it's capable of sharp turns and pacing and everything. And um, I really like it for that. So ju just a comparison, again, it's, it's not uh, really a competition. There are different kind of products. But for example, uh, Fio K5 Pro, has that sort of big, warm, fuzzy sound that's laid back and relaxed. That's more cruiser-like. This, this is a race car. And I, I really loved it. I, I just enjoyed listening to all kinds of music through it. I don't find it favoring any specific genres or things like that. It's simply a great sounding device. And lastly, I want to quickly show you how it looks when you actually turn it on. You can see it uh, changes colors here. 
this is supposed to be white, but uh, it looks quite teal to me, you know? And uh, that means it's connected. Red means when it's not connected to your device. And um, green is when you actually play something. I'll show you that too. Okay, let's play something. Yeah, we are playing. Green is basically almost for everything, for PCM, DSD, DXD. It's magenta only when you play MQA files, for example, Tidal, Master Streaming, or things like that. But um, in every other case, it's green and it's white when it's just connected and not playing anything. Once again, it looks more like <laughs> teal to me, but that's okay. So yeah, basically nothing more to add here. It's just great sounding device, you know, and I would easily recommend it for people needing portable DAC, even if I heard only its single-ended output, because it's already better as it is than Dragonfly Red, in my opinion and to my ears at least. But when you actually switch to balanced output, there's just no competition. It goes like two notches above everything that I've heard from any portable dongle near this price. So if you're after a device like this, this one gets my full recommendation. It's just one of those easy reviews, you know, when, when the device is so good and does everything really great and you, you just don't have to worry about finding and describing faults. So that would be it for today, guys. Thank you for watching. And if you liked it, please click like and subscribe. And also visit my website where you can find all these reviews in written form with scores. See you next time.